Uh, sometimes you come to a point where you've got your saws and you need to, sh you know, you've sharpened them and you want to set them. Sometimes the set goes off a saw. The more you use a saw, the more it moves down into the plate. Then you have to sometimes go in and restore the set on the teeth. The set on the teeth is like this, where the one tooth goes one way and the other tooth goes the other. So uh, I want to talk about saw sets because they sell two types when you actually only need one. Um, and um, what happened over the decades was you end up with um, a saw set that has a wide plunger, which we call a hammer, and a thin plunger, which we still call a hammer. So when you put the two together and you see those plungers come forward, you can see on this old one in, on this side, the plunger is very thin. And on this one, a more modern one on the right, this is quite thick. In fact, it's about twice as thick. But the thin one will, will set any size of sawtooth generally. I'm not saying you shouldn't have two sizes. You could, and it's fine. You can pick these up quite cheaply from eBay or from secondhand places. I usually pay about three or four pounds for them. But I've got one here that I think is too thick. So I, I want to show you how to work that so that you've got a thin saw set that will do both. Now, why do we need both? Well, you've got different types of saw. This is an old saw. It's a very old saw in for restoration. I've sharpened this one. I haven't set it yet. It's got a little bit of set, but not enough. So this one looks to be about six teeth to the inch. This one, on the other hand, is about 14 teeth to the inch. So it's much smaller tooth, which means I need the fine uh, set. This is an old saw set. This is a steel one. I don't particularly like the steel ones. I like the bronze ones. Here's a modern maker. This is Somax that makes this one. This is a copy of this uh, Eclipse one. And this one does have a fine uh, set, a fine uh, plunger. But you've got one of these. You just picked it up from a second-hand flea market or something and you want to work it. We're going to work through that in a minute. But what you do when you put the, let me show you on this bigger saw here, you put the tooth, uh, the set on the tooth that's leaning away from you. Can you see right in there? When you press, the, squeeze the two triggers here, it pushes the tooth away from you and it sets. It has a slight spring in the steel so it springs back. So I'm doing every other tooth. Now this is a six points per inch saw and so I've got this set on a number eight. I want to talk to you about that too, because these, these, um, this platform inside here rotates from a 12 down to a number four. So if you have a four points per inch saw, normally the advice from the manufacturer would be to, to set the anvil to number four and then squeeze that tooth to, to, to conform to that platform. But the problem is that's way, way too much set on a number f on a four point saw. If you go to the other end of the scale, if you go to a number 12, um, a number 12 is good for just about any saw that has teeth from say eight points on up to 12, 14, 16, 18 points per inch. So you can use one setting. So you don't really need those in-between settings now because you know it's not really good to have too much set on the saw because you take out too much stock and the saw tends to waver in the cut. So I generally advise people, if you have a 14 points per inch tenon saw or something like that, I would probably recommend you go somewhere around eight to 10 points. You can put more or less in but eight to 10 is, is really a good set. So that's what I would recommend. So this is a six point sprint. So what would I set this for? Usually I would set six. I would set it for a number eight or even up to a number 10. I try and keep it pretty much consistent. I don't like too much uh, kerf because I have to take, up a lot, take out a lot more wood. The saw works better with less set. So we're gonna dismantle this one and um, how we do that. The anvil I'm going to leave, this is looking in good condition, it's clean. But if you've just got this saw from the second hand market, the chances are inside here it's going to need some grease or some oil. So take out this part here 
And in this particular saucer, within this uh, bowel area here, there are, there's a spring here, and there's another spring inside here. This one operates this way, like this. Get it into the recess. And um, so this one is, when you press the handle, this squeezes this, this compression spring, is too, too hard for me to pr compress with my fingers. But it also compresses this on the outside rim of here. So when this goes in here, you can see the hammer protrudes through the top. This is the plunger, and this is going to hit this aspect inside here. So when you squeeze this, can you see inside there? When you squeeze this, the big barrel hits the plate of the saw and then the plunger inside bends the tooth. So it hits the saw, that holds the saw and then it squeezes the tooth over. So this is the part, this is really the offending part here. This is too thick. Let me give you a quick comparison between this and the smaller set. The smaller set will, will easily, I've been using a smaller set for five decades now, and um, it bends the tooth just the same as the wide one does. So there's no reason why you shouldn't just have one set fits all, because they do. This is a little stiff, because it's this is what I didn't like about the steel ones, because sometimes these uh, set screws inside here will be too hard to get out. There we go. So set these apart. So you can see on this one, let's clean that a little bit. Can you see the difference between the two plungers there? Now on the bigger one on the left here, there's a slight fracture on that top edge where it's broken. That's because these are hardened steel so they don't wear uh, too much. But sometimes that top part hits the steel, a hard piece of steel, and it'll fracture off. So this one is fractured. Let me see if I can point that out. Right on the very, very tip here, it's broken away. So we're going to grind this now. Let me, what did I do with that? I'm going to keep these together over here so I don't get them confused. I've got a grinding wheel here. One of the things that I would have liked would have been if I could have taken a file to this and just file this off. But this is hardened steel. It's, just, it's certainly as hard as the file, so it can't generally be filed. Uh, I'm using a grinding wheel to cut the steel because, of course, I just said it, the file is too hard. Uh, the, it's not hard enough. The, the plunger is too hard for it. I'm using a pair of pliers because it will get too hot. My fingers will be too close. I've got water in here just to plunge because if I build up too much heat, it will soften the steel, and I don't want that. So let's take a look. So I'm going to just take off the side of this plunger here. I'm going to keep checking myself and I'm going to keep plunging just to keep the steel cool. And I want to keep parallel. Can you see I'm keeping parallel to that um, front edge so I'm getting an equal bevel all the way across. That's what I'm aiming for. It wouldn't, it wouldn't be too bad. So now, now I've taken it down. Can you also see that I'm tapering in from one side? So I, I'm actually tapering it, whereas this one is cut parallel. I'm going to keep the, the uh, mine as, as wide as I can right in this point here. I'm keeping it wide here, down here. So it tapers in from both sides. That's going to give me a strong stub to this, um, the whole bar. 
I'm going to do the other side. And I'm aiming to take about 25% um, off both sides to give me a thin plunger. That's working great. I don't want to take too much off. And I'm really about there now. Just trim up a little bit just to clean off. me I think. One more little spot, remember on the top, I doubt whether you'll see this, but you can see right here on the very tip there's a little broken spot where it had fractured previously. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to take the corner off here like this, just a little tiny bit, just put a little bevel on that top edge like that. Can you see that? So now I've got my plunger narrowed down. Now how does it compare to this one? There are the two. Can you see those? Is that close enough for you to see? So they're pretty close to one another and that's all I need. I need that tapered uh, point to a point there that gives me exactly what I need to work on my smaller tooth saws so and that's what you can do with your saw sets so reassembly now um, I, I probably would lubricate after so this one's from this one here here's my new one so we spring on here spring on here now this is important this um, angled platform goes uppermost when we assemble this in the body of the plier there. So that goes that way. And this goes opposite to that. Can you see that? So when I put this in here, it's going in this way. Got that. So this now slides in here. So you can see how the hammer comes past the top here. And this gets slipped into here. And this might want to twist around, but this part of the plier here, this top lever, goes over this, and then it's supported within these two housings here. And that should keep your plunger. You're going to have to press, and it's a little bit awkward to press everything and hold it together while you get this in. But it's just a question of tension, really, as much as anything. Once it's in, it'll hold and then you want to make sure it's located in the hole on the other side. And cinch this down. Now, if you're doing this on, say, one of these Solmax pliers here, you'll find this is an alloy. It's not really as strong as the bronze ones. And when you cinch this screw tight, if you do tighten, it will be too tight. So you have to leave it a little bit half a turn or a quarter of a turn back off. Now we can see we've got that plunger tapered towards the tip and we strengthen the tip by putting a top bevel on it. Now we're ready to set just about any size saw. So you can see this would go on here and you squeeze the trigger here. No, not the trigger. Squeeze the plier and you have got a nice set to each of those teeth. Quick and simple, five minute exercise. You've got some saw sets for the rest of your life. I just want to show you the relationship with this saw plunger, in, you know, with reference to the teeth it's going to be bending from here on. 
can you see inside here, D don't be concerned about the numbers on there, but you can see the plunger, how it hits these bigger teeth very nicely. There's no issue there. And when you squeeze that, you get your tooth set. But let's go to this one, which is a 14 points to the inch. And you can see how the plunger, the hammer, fits right in between the other two teeth without any compromise. And that's what I want the smaller saw set for. But even on this one here, this is my Groves, this is my personal, one of my personal saws here. Even on this Groves, it goes right in between at 16 points to the inch. It goes right in between the other two teeth now. And I could grind more off if I was doing a 22 points per inch, so I might do that. But I don't really think I would need to. I wouldn't, have, I wouldn't generally use a 22 points per inch saw or set a 22 points per inch saw. So it's a very practical solution to your saw set. And now you need only one saw set and you can buy them very inexpensively. And that's it. Clock's telling me it's five o'clock. Nope, four o'clock. We're an hour ahead. <laughs>